Welcome to tutorial 6, Data Input and Output. In this tutorial, we will investigate how data files can be used to drive simulations in GPSX and assess your model's predictive capabilities. We will also explore the statistical analysis tools available in GPSX. Begin by opening the model created in tutorial 2 and save it under a new name. Ensure that GPSX is in simulation mode. Create new input controllers for the influent composition variables. Open the influent advisor by right clicking on the influent object and selecting Composition Influent Characterization. When influent advisor opens, it will fill most if not all of your screen while open. Pressing the right facing arrow between the user inputs and state variables column will collapse the influent advisor so only the user inputs column is visible. Now that you have room, drag the total COD, total TKN, and ammonia nitrogen variables to the input control section. We will now create data files to be read by GPSX during the simulation. Data files can be created for GPSX in two different ways that will be explored through this tutorial. The first method is to manually create a spreadsheet outside of GPSX and add it to the scenario. This is a useful technique when preparing data for multiple variables. Open the data file organizer window by pressing the data file button on the main toolbar. Pressing the new button will open the data file creation wizard. Select the Input Variables option and press Next. You will then be prompted to select the variables you would like to include in the data file. Any variables that currently have an input controller will be available to select from. From the Flow Control subheading, select the Influent Flow, the Total COD, the Total TKN, and the Ammonia Nitrogen variables. Press Next and you will be asked where you would like to save the file. Press Finish to create the file. You will be prompted to open the file. Press Yes. This will open a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet that contains five data columns. The first column is labeled T for time with units of days indicated by the lowercase letter D below. The first row in columns B through E contain the cryptic variable names of the variables we selected in the data file creation wizard. The cryptic variable names are the internal short form names given to variables in GPSX for use in calculations. The cryptic variable names are specific to each GPSX layout and are different for each variable and object in the layout. We will now verify that the cryptic names used in the data file are the same as those used in GPSX. The simplest way to do this is to look at the tooltip that appears when you hover the mouse cursor over the input control label. Alternatively, if the variable you are interested in is not currently on an input control, you can use the Find feature in GPSX to quickly look it up. To open the Find window, go to Edit, Find, or press Ctrl plus F on your keyboard. When looking for cryptic variable names, ensure the Keyword option is selected below the Find Entry field and enter Total COD into the field. Press the Find button and all of the variables in the GPSX layout that contain Total COD in the plain English variable name will be displayed grouped by the object they are associated with. Pressing the Go To Location button next to the Input Total COD under the Influent Object heading will take you to the Influent Advisor. Hovering the mouse cursor over the Total COD variable in the Influent Advisor will display the cryptic variable name. If in Tutorial 1 you label the objects differently or you would like to manually add new variables to the spreadsheet, you can right click on the variable name and select Copy Cryptic Name to Clipboard and paste it in the appropriate location in the Excel workbook. For example, if the total COD cryptic variable name was incorrect, I would copy the name now and paste it into the Excel workbook. A populated version of the data file has been included for use with this tutorial. Locate the GPSX installation directory on your machine and navigate to Layouts. Open the Tutorials folder and locate the Tutorial 6 Example Data XLS file. Open this file and replace any cryptic variable names if required. Save the file in the current working directory.
We will now add this spreadsheet to the active scenario. Open the Scenarios menu on the Simulation toolbar and select the Configuration Data Files option. The base model scenario should be the only scenario available as no other scenarios were created in Tutorial 2. With the Base Model Scenario selected, press the Data Files button. In the new window, press Add to open a file explorer and select the Tutorial 6 example data file. Press Accept to add the data file to the layout. You will notice that the input controls have automatically been changed from slider type controls to file input controls. File input type controllers cannot be directly edited but rather read in data directly from a file. Run a 5 day steady state simulation. As the simulation proceeds, you will notice that the input control values change automatically. The model dynamically reacts to the changing influent which is shown by the increasing effluent solids concentration. We will now look at an alternative method of setting up data files using the GPSX data file tool. This method is useful for simulations where you are only manipulating one or two variables with a data file. Begin by creating a new liquid temperature input control by right clicking an open space on the layout and selecting System, Input Parameters, Physical Environment Settings. Drag the liquid temperature variable to a new input control tab and name the tab Temperature. To access the data file for this input, right click on the control label and select Data File. This will open a new data entry window. Enter in the following data. The tab key can be used to move to the next cell. Accepting this form will prompt you to save the data file in the same directory as the layout. The default file name will be the name of the layout with the cryptic variable name concatenated to it. The default is appropriate so click save to save the data file. You will notice that the interactive slider for the liquid temperature has automatically changed into a file input control that can no longer be manually adjusted. Run a 5 day steady state simulation. As the simulation proceeds, the value of influent flow, concentration, and liquid temperature will change on the input controls. We will now look at how we can plot imported data values alongside the simulated results. This allows you to directly compare measured real-world results to simulation results in GPSX. This will make calibrating and optimizing the model easier. Create a spreadsheet file with the displayed example measured data. The table shows an example of observed suspended solids leaving our plant. Once you have completed the table, save it in the same directory as the layout. To verify the cryptic variable name for the total suspended solids in the effluent, press the Output Graph Properties button and place the mouse cursor over the variable name until a tooltip appears. The tooltip will have the label and cryptic variable information which should correspond to the name used in the spreadsheet. Go to the Scenario Configuration Data File window and add this file to the layout. Run a 5 day steady state simulation. Notice that the data entered in the file appears on the output graph as red diamonds. A statistical analysis can be conducted on the model's ability to fit the measured data that has been plotted alongside the simulated results. To open the statistics menu, right click anywhere on the output graph and select Statistics, Total Suspended Solids. In this menu, you can select the types of statistical analysis you would like to perform on the data. Select the following analysis types from the available options. Press Accept and GPSX will automatically generate an output graph for each of the selected analysis types on the Current Output tab. Press Auto Arrange to fit all of the graphs to the current display area. The measured data distribution within a unit can also be plotted along with the simulated results as a bar chart. Begin by creating a new output tab by clicking on the New Graph Tab button on the Outputs toolbar. Create a graph of the readily degradable soluble substrate in reactors within the plug flow tank. 
To do this, right click on the plug flow tank and select output variables, concentrations and reactors. Press the more button under the organic variables subheading and drag the readily degradable soluble substrate and reactors variable onto the output tab. It will be a bar chart by default because this variable represents an array of variables. Press the data file button on the main toolbar to open the data file organization window. Press new to open the data file creation wizard. Select output variables and press next. From the menu, select the following variables. Note that the bracket in the cryptic variable name represents the reactor number within the aeration tank. Press next. Press finish to save the file with the default name and open the spreadsheet when prompted. Enter the following data into the spreadsheet. Save the changes made to the spreadsheet. Open the graph properties menu and select the auto scale feature for the bar chart. Run a zero day steady state simulation. The data from the spreadsheet will be overlaid on the output graph. The simulation results appear as a colored bar while the measured data appears as a meshed bar. Pressing a bar in the bar chart will display the measured data first in square brackets, followed by the simulation results. Save the layout. You have now completed the sixth tutorial in the GPSX tutorial series and should be familiar with the two methods of adding data files to GPSX, plotting measured data files alongside simulated results, and performing a statistical analysis on the predictive performance of your model.